Okay, so I wanted to make a video response to uh, to Daryl's video, The Absurdity of Divine Judgment and the Forgiveness of Sin. Um, I think we're both equally disappointed that all the footage from our debate was lost, Daryl. So, um, unfortunately, <laughs> what, what we were trying to avoid in... Um, in doing that in the first place, it seems we're not doing anyhow in making video responses back and forth to each other. So, um, I wanted to talk about what you said. And, and first, bef before I get into my response, let me just say that um, I really enjoyed the debate. You know, you were you were definitely um, you were definitely a gentleman. Um, you know, there was no crosstalk, no bickering, no um, trying to one-up one another. I think we had a real good, genuine conversation. And, um, you know, I don't know if minds were changed or anything necessarily. But nonetheless, it was a great conversation. You were a gentleman, and I appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to address you face-to-face. -face. But alas, we're back to this format of um, making these little response videos. And I'm going to try to keep it fairly brief. Um, I I have my sword with me. Um, the first thing I want to ask you in, in morality, you, you said with ethics that um, you don't need an objective standard for ethics. And of course you do. I mean, that to, that's the absurdity of, of, of any statement is to say that, uh, well, I don't, need, I don't need an objective standard. Well, you know, C.S. Lewis said, how can you know what is crooked unless you know that which is straight? Um, even the title of your video, The Absurdity of Divine Judgment, how do you even know what absurdity is without having a standard of what's not absurd? You have to, there's a line, there's a line drawn, and, um, I really feel like you, you misrepresented my argument on Hitler, um, and we'll just let the viewers decide on that. My case was this, that um, you said in your video, and, and in the debate, not in the video, but you said in the debate that um, might makes right when it comes to morality. Basically, whoever has the upper hand gets to determine the morals. And that's, that's when I brought up the topic of Hitler. You know, by that standard, Hitler wrote the laws. He had control of, of writing laws. He had the majority on his side. And um, so by that standard of might makes right, and I think that, I think uh, you, you've said this in other videos also, that um, Hitler was perfectly justified to kill six million Jews and five million homo uh, homosexuals and gypsies and mentally retarded people and things like that. Um, you know, you, you, you can't call that wrong if that's your standard. Um, you continually say that we all want to work toward, uh, we, we do it because that's what works. Well, that is what worked in the in the uh, uh, in Germany in the 1930s and 40s. So again, who are you to say that that's wrong? And my point in saying that is that of it's to point out the absurdity of the atheist position. You can't you can't call something right and wrong without. Um, without jumping into the lap of God. Um, otherwise, all the atheists can say is, well, I don't prefer that. I don't prefer Hitler. But you can't say that it's wrong. You don't have the objective line. You don't have, the, uh, you don't have a, a standard by which to call something right or wrong without God. Um, Let's see. You asked a question, do we need a single objective standard? Uh, I, I don't know how you say no to that. I don't know how you say that, no, we don't need an objective moral standard. You say, well, it's because what we all agree on. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll take it right back to Hitler and say, well, we all agreed to that. And um, um, what, what it also, in your worldview, if might makes right... Uh, and this was something you were also not able to answer in the debate, is um, how do you explain social reformers, um, such as Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, William Wilberforce, people who had, um, they had all the might against them. They had the majority against them. Everything stacked against them. Um, you know, there's no explanation for that in your worldview without looking to an objective standard to which they were appealing to. 
and to which um, society uh, progressively moved to that side. Um, and again, all of this to point out, you know that there's a God. You know that there's a God intuitively. That's why it says in Romans 1.18, and I, I read this to you during the debate. I'll read it again, and I know that your um, little atheist buddies don't like when you pull out the sword of the word, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it anyways. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unright ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. The, the law of God is written on your heart. Um, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That's why you're without excuse. While you deny having a moral standard, it's clear that you have a moral standard. You just deny who gave you that. Um, with To have morals is to automatically assume that there is a God that exists. So you continue to deny that you do so in your unrighteousness, and that's why hell is reasonable. Um, um, you asked a question, what kind of world do you want to live in? Well, if I live in the kind of world, according to your worldview, where uh, we want to round up the Irish and put them into concentration camps and gas chambers, and um, I have the majority, I, I write the laws and the legislation to do that, you have no objective moral standard to say that that is wrong, except to... Um, I'm sorry about the noise in the background. My daughter's watching a movie, so I don't know how that's going to come across on the video. So, um, but with that aside, again, how can you say that that's wrong? If in your worldview, might makes right, and I have the might on my side, there's the only thing you can do is submit and agree to it if you're that unfortunate Irishman being dragged off to a concentration camp. You, li you literally have no argument against that if you are that person. Um, you know, we went through... Um, the reason I was asking you, you know, have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Um, we were going through the Ten Commandments because um, that is the objective moral law that everyone intuitively agrees to. Um, God's Ten Commandments that, you know, we all agree lying is wrong. We all agree stealing is wrong. We all agree that adultery is wrong. Um, we all agree that murder is wrong because God has written those things on our hearts. You know, that's why I asked you those questions. Have you ever lied? And you say, well, I don't lie habitually. Well, how can I believe you? And you confess to me that you're a liar. You know, how, how, how could I ever take your word for that? Um, you said that uh, you lie out of protection or that because a person you talk to doesn't deserve the truth. Again, you make yourself the standard. And that's the problem is that... Um, you want to sit on your own throne. You make the standards for yourself. And if the world did that, the world would be in utter chaos. We would be chopping each other to pieces with machetes because we would all be flexing our own individual rights and preferences um, according to your worldview. But because we have the grace of God, uh, by the grace of God, we have his laws written on our heart. We intuitively know those things. And that's why you have those guilt, not because you've um, violated some self-imposed uh, standard of goodness. Your self-imposed standard of goodness is given to you by God, and you suppress that truth in your unrighteousness. Um, um, he, he, again, you, you he, at, toward the end of your video, you got really... Um, you know, snarky, and you got really, um, you know, your mocking tone toward the Christian worldview um, that comes through in your books, that comes through in uh, most of your videos at Rail Against Atheism, or I'm sorry, Rail Against Christianity. I would challenge you to uh, go into Saudi Arabia with that attitude toward Muslims and see how far you get. But I'm guessing you don't have the fortitude for such a challenge. Um, but you said that in, in your misrepresentation of the Christian worldview, you said Christians um, act morally to avoid judgment. And that's uh, utter and complete, total straw man. It's a misrepresentation of the Christian worldview. And that's why I, I, my argument stands from my first video that you never were a Christian in the first place. Uh, again, John 17.3 says, This is eternal life that you know that you know the one true and living God and his Son whom he has sent. 
Um, that statement just demonstrates that you never knew God. So therefore, you were never a Christian. To say that you were a Christian, again, you're acknowledging that there is a God. So you have to pick a camp. Either you were never an, a, a Christian, you were a false convert, uh, which our churches are utterly littered with today, or... Um, you still believe that there's a God, and you, again, are suppressing that truth in your unrighteousness. Um, but you said that uh, Christians act morally to avoid judgment. No Christian believes that. No Christian who believes the Bible believes that. We act morally because our judgment was poured out on the God-man, Jesus Christ. Uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that in him we could have the righteousness of God. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21, if you want to look that up. Um, so, we don't act morally in hopes that we're avoiding judgment. A Christian is forgiven of all their sins, past, present, and future. Um, you know, us acting morally, we know that uh, the the Bible says in uh, Romans 5, in the book of Galatians, it's, it's repeated, I don't remember exact chapter and verse, that uh, no flesh will be justified by keeping the law. No flesh, that's us, we will not be justified, and, and that's a theological term that means to be made right with God. We will not be made right with God by the keeping of the law. So it's a, um, I, I guess I'm not going to call it a straw man on your part, I'm just going to call it blind ignorance that you don't understand the Christian position, which uh, again is uh, a demonstration that you never were a Christian in the first place. Oh, and you think that the rapist doesn't deserve forgiveness. Um, you're right, nobody deserves forgiveness. That's what makes forgiveness so great, is that nobody deserves it. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God in his grace, no, no sin is unforgivable. Nobody is out of his reach. I saw in your comment feed people complaining that people like Jeffrey Dahmer are, uh, were, became Christians and um, the son of Sam. I think that's an amazing demonstration of God's mercy, is that no one is unforgivable in God's economy. But um, in Daryl's economy, there are those who are unforgiven. So I would, uh, I would just say that what you need to do, Daryl, is to get off of your own throne and bow before the throne of King Jesus. That's what repentance really is. That's why um, people who go to their death holding the position that you do end up in hell, because um, they refuse to get off the own throne of their own lordship and bow to the lordship of King Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus Christ died to pay the penalty for your sins. He rose again on the third day, um, forever defeating sin and death. And if you repent, again, if you get off of your throne and bow down at his, he'll forgive you, the sinner, the liar, the thief, the self-confessed liar and thief. Now you say, well, uh, you have to do that habitually. Well, again, how many times does a rapist have to, uh, have to rape somebody before they're called a rapist? How many times does a murderer have to murder somebody before they're called a murderer? Same, same applies with a liar and a thief. So um, that's basically my response to you, Daryl. Um, I, I hope that I hope that the sign that you made this video, or, or the fact that you made this video, is a sign that the Holy Spirit might be working on your heart. That maybe um, that guilt that you feel upstairs isn't coming from some uh, self-imposed uh, morality that you've broken, but because you realize that you've broken the laws of the God of the universe. And according to Romans 7, you're going to be judged on those laws. And Hebrews 9.27 says it's appointed all of us to die once, and after this comes a judgment. So you're going to stand before him. You're going to be judged. And Ecclesiastes 3 says that eternity is stamped on our hearts. You know it intuitively. Everybody does. I think everybody has the strong capability of denying it. But in the quietness of your heart, you know that it's true. So I'm appealing to that right now. I'm appealing to um, your conscience that you would listen to that courtroom in your mind that says you've sinned against a holy God. And that hell is reasonable because of that. We talked about that a little bit during the debate, didn't we? That, uh, you know, it's not just an arbitrary, an arbitrary set of rules that you've broken. The thou shalt not lie, the thou shalt not steal. 
Um, the God's laws are a reflection of His perfect character. So when and Genesis one twenty eight says that we're we are created in God's image. We are the only thing in all of creation that bears His image. So when you lie, your testimony to all of creation is that God is a liar. The Bible says that God's not a man that He should lie. Anytime you steal something, you've testified to all of creation that God's a thief. That's not true. Um, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Um, you know, so every time you do that, you're saying God's an adulterer, but God is faithful to keep all of his promises all the time. Um, so, you know, you can come up with all these little red herring arguments that you like to, whether it's about the Crusades or whether it's about... Um, you know the you know the the meanie god of the old testament who slayed women and children and things like that um you can come up with all those red herrings but the bottom line is that what matters is what the truth is it doesn't matter what you believe you can believe uh, i i can believe with all my heart that the sun isn't going to rise tomorrow and it doesn't matter how much i believe it it's not going to stop the sun from coming up you have to believe, you, what you need to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. You need to repent of your sins. I'll say this to anybody who happens to be watching, is that, um, you know, Jesus said in, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He's the only way into heaven. So if you're looking for truth, look to the person who claimed to be truth itself, truth in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus, at his judgment during his passion, he stood before Pontius Pilate, and he said to Pontius Pilate that all those who are of the truth hear my voice. And Pontius Pilate looked him in the eye and said, what is truth? And he turned around and walked away. Biggest mistake he ever made. And that's what most of you atheists are doing. You say, what is truth? And you deny the man who claimed to be truth itself. And that's why hell is reasonable. That's why the gates of hell are locked from the inside. Because if Jesus stood to you face to face, you would, uh, and you were given the choice to put Jesus on the cross or, or uh, Barabbas, you'd still choose um, Barabbas, the murderer, just as um, they did back then. So, uh, and it's because you love your sin. It's because you love your sin so much, just like I used to up until five years ago. So that's all. I didn't want to exceed 15 minutes. I'm sorry, I went about 17 and a half. So um, I look forward to having a response. Maybe you'll make some other videos, talk about, you know, how, uh, you know, we talked about logic and science and, and uh, scripture and the trustworthiness of that. So nonetheless... God bless you, Daryl. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for a lot of these uh, mockers who are leaving ridiculous comments on your page, such as, uh, let's see here, who's been down here doing comments that have been trolling our pages? Well, it doesn't matter. Piano Paul, I know you're one of them. Um, we'll be praying for you, praying that, uh, you know, if God can drag me out of the gutter, he can drag anyone out of there. God bless you.